Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Hopefully we worked out those kinks. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, sorry that I wanted to restart, but you know me, I don't do things halfway if I can help it at all. So, and there was no way to test that without having you guys hop on and give us some feedback. <sighs> Piece of hair. <laughs> So hopefully um, everyone who wants to be here can get back here. Hi, Charlotte. Um, yes, Joan, we're going to try again. I We don't see the flickering anymore. Let me know if, if you guys see it. Uh, the sound appears to be good. The video appears to be good. I fixed the lighting as best we can. It's going to be dark on this side because we don't have any light coming from the corner. So just going to have to deal with that. And uh, the important part is that you can see Anna and you can see what she's working on. So, um, that being said, Anna, you want to tell them what we're doing today? Well, today, as you can, not me sticking on that, see, we are doing a 4D Vision Golden Retriever model. Yes, anatomy model. Anatomy model. Of a dog. We're going to check out the insides of a dog. What do you think? You yeah. excited? Oh, uh, yeah. So, we don't need these parts yet. This is, this is the outside of the dog, see? Um, we're going to look at the inside of the dog. So do you want to, so I am going to be building because these pieces, some of you guys have probably seen us do a lot of these 3D, 4D models. The pieces are really small. They're kind of hard to put together sometimes. Um, so I'm going to work on that while Anna is reading about um, some facts, right? And some information about the dog anatomy? Well, no, well, you're not going to start until I'm done reading because I need to tell them what all these things do in dogs. Oh, the pieces. Because sometimes it's, it's different. It's different in things. Okay. All right. So. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, do you want to read this this stuff to them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's listen. And I'll do some of the questions. Okay. For the questions. The dog is the most complex. Sounded out. Let's sound it out seriously. Break it down. Come. 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 Pan. 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 What if you take the end off? What does it say? Companion. 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 What's a companion? Like a friend. Like a friend, yes. And so add the ending. I don't know how to pronounce that. Just add the A-T-E onto the end. Go ahead. Companionate. 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 The dog is the most what? Companionate animal in human history. That means it's like our biggest companion, right? It's the, it's the biggest animal friend to humans. In human history. Got some hair in your eyes. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, keep going. Actually, is the is a domesticated form of the gray wolf, a member of the Canidae family. Wait, what? Wait, Can what? It, isn't that the name of Charlie's food? Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Since it's a dog food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. That's so funny. It's a member of the Canada family of the order Carnivora. The relationship between dogs and humans started over 15,000 years ago. Wow, that's a long time. Human began to intentionally breed dogs and domesticate them. Nowadays, the dog has developed into hundreds of varied breeds. By estimation, there are about 400 million dogs around the world. 400 million dogs. Wow. Thank you, Leanne. Modern dog breeds show more variation in size, appearance, and behavior than any other land animal. Cool. Dog anatomy includes similar internal structures as humans, but details of structures vary tremendously from breed to breed. Dogs have powerful muscles and cardiovascular system that support both sprinting and endurance. Mm -hmm. Can I and teeth for catching, holding, and tearing. Wait, what is uh, cardiovascular muscle? What did it say? They have what? 
Can you read that sentence again about the cardi- cardiovascular muscle? Dogs have powerful muscles and cardio- cardiovascular system. Okay, so they have powerful muscles and a powerful cardiovascular system. What is the cardiovascular system? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. It's your heart. So they have powerful muscles and a strong heart, which helps them do what? It helps them support both sprinting and endurance and teeth for catching, holding, and tearing. Yep, sprinting and endurance is, so what is sprinting? Okay. It's like short bursts of running. Like run really, really, really fast for a really short period of time. And endurance is the ability to run really far for a really long time without getting tired out. Why do you suppose that dogs need to have good sprinting and endurance? Like historically, if you think about dogs in the wild, why did they need to have good sprinting and good endurance? Maybe for like catching prey or something? Yes, for catching food. They would need good endurance and sprinting, right? Because they'd have to hurry up and run fast to say if they're chasing a rabbit or something. Mm -hmm. And if it's getting away from them, they have to be able to chase it for a long time to chase it down, right? Or or a deer or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why else? What would be the other reason? They would need endurance and sprinting. Either they're chasing food or they're trying not to be food. They're trying to get away, right, from something that's chasing them to eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Um, Thank you, Michelle. Its ancestral skeleton provided the ability to run and leap. Nice. Dogs have dichromats and have color. Wait, they have what? Dichromats? Dichromats? I don't know. Dye. Sit up. Dye. Dye. Dichromats? 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 Maybe. I don't know. Dichromats. Who knows what dichromats are? Anybody? I'm sure someone does. You. Dichromats. Does anyone know? I can Google it real quick. Let's see. Dichromats. Very interesting. See if anyone says anything while I'm looking. How do you spell it? D I C H R O M A T S. What colors do dichromats see? So it's related to vision and color. And it says, unlike trichromats, okay, so it has to do with- Do you freeze? (laughs) Yes, I froze. (laughs) Sorry, I'm loading. (laughs) It says, unlike trichromats, white, experienced when both cone cells are equally excited, can be evoked by monochromatic light. Light. That means that dichromats see white in the rainbow. So dichromatic vision is partial color blindness in which the eye contains only two types of cone photopigments instead of the typical three. So this is why you guys have probably heard that dogs only see in black and white, which isn't true. They can see certain colors, but not other colors. And that's why, because they're dichromats, so they only have two cones instead of three cones like us. Um, and yes. here, I had my thing. <laughs> you can just take it off. <laughs> just, just take it off. It's okay. Fine. I, can, I, can keep. I have some things here. Do you know how many pairs of eyelids a dog has? Three? Yes. pair of eyelids. What's it say? The main upper and lower lids and a third lid hidden between them in the owner corner of the eye. Mm-hmm. The third eyelid, called a nictating membrane, or haw. A nictating membrane? Or haw. Or haw. <laughs> it can sweep across the transparent cornea of the eye and clean it like a windshield blade. Have you guys ever noticed that? Have you ever seen your dogs? So they have their upper eyelid, their lower eyelid, which closes over the eye, but sometimes you'll catch them 
with this clear, almost transparent eyelid that goes across the eye this way. And so you'll see them open their eye and you'll see this thing go whoosh. Anyone ever noticed that before? I have. I have not. <laughs> All right, keep reading the other side. Let's finish that side up and then up we can here. start building this side. Pick up where you left well, off, I have please. Another, I have another thing. Let's finish, I where, let's finish this because we already started it and then you can move on to those things while I'm building. No, because I need to say pieces. Of pieces can we finish? Can we let? Can we not argue on a live okay. stream? Thank you. So, and have color vision equivalent to red green color blindness in humans. As we know, dog has very strong smelling sense due to nearly two hundred and twenty million smell sensitive cells, which wow. is forty four times as humans. 44 times more smelling sensors than humans. Yes. Okay, cool. Dogs can hear sounds with wider frequency compared with humans. Dogs can wait, what? Hear? Hear sound with wider frequency. Wider, wider frequency, okay. Compared with humans. Okay, great. That's it. That's it? Okay. okay, really interesting. So before we get started on those facts, I'm gonna start building. So if you wanna share with them what these pieces are, let's do that first. Cause I could be building while you're reading those. Um, so the skull is already together. It shows it in pieces, but you can see it came already together. And so let me see if I can Get it up there, not blurry for you guys, probably not, because there's too many things in the frame, but that is the skull. Um, actually, the mouth opens, look at that. <laughs> uh, and then, what else do we have? So, What's skull. it say about the skull? There are a wide range of shapes in dog skulls. Depends on different breeds. Oh. The dog skull is a strong, hard care for protecting its brains, like, it's a what? A humans. strong, hard what? It's a strong, hard care for protecting its brains. Care? Care. Cage. It says care. I think they typoed. That yeah. doesn't make sense. Well, it does care for it because it keeps it safe. But. Okay. The skull of a dog has less number of bones compared with the skull of a human. That makes sense. So... Less, less moving, less. Let's uh, okay. put the skull and the dog. So the skull is already together. So we are going to move on to, um, I'm gonna put the rear bones together. And so we need these legs. Are these already together too? These are the rear legs, right? Yes. So we've got these two little legs. Look at the little paws. They're very cute. <laughs> Um, the skeletal system is quite strong in most of the dog breeds. However, its size, shape, and proportion will vary greatly in different breeds. Okay, and then we have this part. Do you know what this part is, Anna? I'm going to push the legs into it. Can I see? Um, Does it say anything about it? No. Maybe it's the pelvis? It is the pelvis, yes. Good job. But it doesn't say anything about about no, the pelvis? That it only says like the okay. skeleton. Well, I'm going to push the legs into the pelvis. So that's going to give us those rear, rear legs. See that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put this guy in there. What's this? That is the <coughs> spine. <coughs> well, this is, this is the end of the spine, which is what? What is this tail. part? The tail, yes. So There are I'm... many different shapes for dog tails. However, some breeds can be born with a short tail or no tail at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, did everybody know that your dog's tail has bones in it? I did not know that. You didn't know that? Mm -mm. Yeah, that's why it's really important to be careful with your dog's tail, because you can actually break those bones and hurt them. All right, so we're gonna get the tail in here. Pop it in there. Yeah, we're gonna pop it in. It's very pokey, just <laughs> like a real spine. <laughs> uh -huh. It is poking me. <laughs> it's uh. like, hey, get me away from here. I thought I wasn't supposed to be in there. I was supposed to 
supposed to be just a piece to look at. Ooh. Okay, and after this, I'm going to do... The other parts. I'm going to do this piece. Is there anything on there about this piece? Ribs. What does it say? Nothing. Nothing? There's no thing about ribs. There's no thing about ribs? Well, you know what the ribs do, right? Tell them what the ribs do. To protect the heart. They protect the heart and the other organs, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. So we've got, Some look at, them. this looks like a, a velociraptor or something right now. Doesn't even look like a dog, does it? Looks like some kind of dinosaur. Yeah. Looks very odd. See, Pam says that's a good reason not to pull on the tail because it's connected to the spine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to... Don't you want to attach the other part of the spine first? Nope. It's all here. Just have to connect it. The spine bones connected to the rib cage. <laughs> How? That is my question. Oh, there it is right there. Just have to find the holes. Okay, so there we go. We've got the rear end of a dog. The bum. The bum. The bum. Janelle, we're building you. The pooper. <laughs> the pooper. The pooper. The pooper. Okay. Uh, now we need to do the front legs. Okay. So look at these guys. They have they have some bones up there on the top. What do you suppose those big ones, those big flat ones are? Maybe the hips. Well, the hips are back here, right? In the pelvic bone? Yeah. So what would these ones be? Like the shoulders? Shoulders, yeah. What does it say? And it say anything about these guys? No. It's, no. It's all part of the skeleton. All part of the. And this. it's and there's only one thing about the skeleton. Okay. Except for one thing, the skull. All that's, part that's of the. That's the only thing that's not in the skeleton part. Skeletal system. Hmm. So it doesn't say anything about those. All right. Oh, dog has his legs crossed. All right. Look at that. Now we're looking more like a dog. All right. Because it has four legs. Mm hmm Okay, now we have this piece. What is this piece? That could be the neck. The neck, that's right. So that's going to go... Neck bones. This way. Or is it going to go this way? That, like that. Yeah, like that. And then... The skull. The skull. Mm-hmm. Pop that on there. And then we've got a skeleton and dog. And look at that. Put that out for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, we have a Halloween decoration. That's right. <laughs> you stand in crooked. Why are you standing crooked, dude? Because it needs to go in the thing. Okay. You're not building he's lean, it. He's, okay. he's leaning. Well, it needs to go in the thing. Well, first, before we put it in the thing, we need to deal with all these parts. What are these? Let's start Thanks. with this one. Take that. a look at this. Hold on, let me show them. Look at that guy. What do you think that is? What do you suppose all that is? Weird. What does that look like to you? This, I know, is the small intestine. The small intestine? Is that it, or is there other stuff there too? It's just the small, small intestine. Okay, what does it say about the small I mean, intestine? That might be the, maybe the kidneys or something on there or something. What does it say? Further digestion of food continues in the small intestine. The intestine's wall also secretes the enzymes. Secretes. Secretes the enzymes that aid in digestion and absorption of. Digestion. Digestion and absorption and absorption. Good. Uh, of di of digested foods. Digestive. Digested. Digested foods. Let's start over. Let's articulate all those words clearly. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. The intestines wall. Also secretes enzymes that aid in digestion and absorption of digested foods. Much better, thank you. Most of the nutrients, 
the small intestine, most of the nutrients small intestine, and it doesn't make any sense. Most of the nutrients small intestine. Nutrients small intestine. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's some typos in yeah, here. That's so weird. Where is it? Hold on, let me see. Most of the nutrients small intestine called. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. <laughs> called the what? The jejunum. 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 And the ilium. 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 The undigested particles will pass through the large intestine. Oh, maybe that's the missing word. Most of the nutrients digested in the small intestine. Oh no. Most of the nutrients, the, I don't know. In? I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to attach this guy to this guy. So we've got small intestine. What's this? That's a stomach. A stomach? What is that on the stomach? Mm, There's a picture of it. Yeah, I know. Look Honey. closely. What is this? What is this on the stomach? Does anyone know? Does anyone know? It's a stomach wall, I think. No. It's a... Spleen. Spleen, yes. It is a spleen. What does it say about the stomach? The dog's stomach is unlike that of the herbivore mammal. It is because dog is a carnivore. Its stomach is more like the human's. The stomach walls secretes hydro hydrochloric and en and hydrochloric acid acid and enzymes helping to break down food into smaller particles nice job hydrochloric acid and enzymes so your stomach secretes hydrochloric acid and enzymes breaks down your food right Dog. the dog's spleen is an elongated organ located in the abdomen which is related to the blood and lymph systems mm -hmm. The spleen. That's what this is. I was right. It's a kidney. Yes. The spleen what? The spleen filters the blood and participates in various immune functions. Okay. So blood filtering, immunity, they're on the stomach. And yes, these guys on the back of the small intestine are what? Kidneys. Kidneys. And what does it say about the kidneys? The structure and size of dog kidneys are also close to human kidneys. That's what it says? Yeah, that's all it says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to put it's these like, two yes, things together, cool. and look at that. We have a digestive system yeah, of yeah. a dog. Yeah. Looks kind of like an ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. What's this thing? Wait, hold on. This is next. This thing that looks like a turkey neck. Check it out. We've got some different colors. We've got some stuff inside there. What do you suppose all that is? Hmm? It's the esophagus. Esophagus? Mm -hmm. This part? Mm -hmm. The part that looks like the neck? Yes. What does it say about the esophagus? It is a muscular membranous tube for passage of food, just like a human. I think that connects on the other side. Okay, and then what else do we have here? The heart. The heart. The dog has a quite big heart. The strong blood pump helps to provide enough oxygen to muscles while running. The size of a dog's heart varies greatly in different breeds and, and in different sizes of dogs. Okay. So that connects together. Yes, so we put these, and what are we connecting together? What are these dark things on either side of the heart and the esophagus the lung the lung what's it say lungs. about that lungs yes it's again multiple dog has a pair of strong lungs that can supply enough oxygen to muscles while running are you are you talking to me or them both Let's speak up both of you dog has what dog has a pair of strong lungs that can supply enough oxygen to muscles while running supply supply enough Oxygen. Oxygen. To muscles while running. And then wait a minute. We're missing something. We have a gap in this system. That's the liver. 
The liver. Look at that. We've got a liver. Looks like a hat, but it's not. It's a liver. The liver. Put the liver in there. I'm putting the liver in there. What's it say about the liver? <laughs> well, so the functions and size of the dog's livers are also very similar to the humans. Oh, that's it. All right. What does a liver do in humans? I don't know. You don't know? No. I think you need to refresh your human anatomy. You don't remember mm -hmm. what the liver does for humans? No. Anybody know what the liver does for humans and dogs? It's a filter. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sharon says, uh, I just saw my gastroenterologist today. Yep, Christy says filters. That's right, it's a filter. For what? It filters out toxins. Oh, hmm. toxins. Okay, so this now needs to go inside the our dog. dog skeleton. So it can have some body. And some body to use for eating food and stuff. Oh, slide it all up in there. Oh, I need to disconnect the spine for a moment so I can slide that part in. And ta-da! Look at that. Dog has insides. And the uh, thing that comes out the well. Very cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Neat, neat, neat. Okay. Yeah. So, what do we have left? What did, is there anything we didn't, oh, you didn't read about the teeth, the tongue? What does it say? Nose. Okay. Dogs start out with 28 baby teeth. By six months of age, these baby teeth fall out and are replaced by 42 adult teeth. Adult dogs have one big sharp canine on each side of the top and bottom jaws. Besides lapping up food and water or kissing its master, the tongue is essential to a dog. Hold on. Speaking of teeth, Anna has another loose one right there on the side of the hole where her top tooth hasn't come in yet. She's got a loose tooth. Besides lapping up food and water, and, or kissing his master, the tongue is essential to a dog. It plays as the body temperature regulator. The evaporation of the moisture on its tongue is for cooling its body. My crown's falling off. What, I didn't know that. I didn't, oh, I did know that because they pant. That's why they pant, right? Mm -hmm. to, to regulate temperature. So yes, they regulate temperature through their tongue. Also. And, and where else, through their? sweat glands on their paws. Paws, yes. But they don't have sweat glands through their body like humans do. That's right. So their tongue and their paw pads, that is how dogs sweat to help regulate their temperature. Uh, also, a dog's nose may be important as a human eyes. A dog has more than 220 million olfactory receptors in its nose, while humans have only 5 million. Need to close its mouth. Yep. <laughs> Keep going. What else are we missing? <laughs> That's all. That's all? Okay, what about those facts? What other facts you got to lay on us about dogs while I finish okay. putting this guy together? I'm going to ask you questions about things, and you have to answer them. If you're wrong, I'll tell you what the answer is, okay? Mm, no, I don't. We're not playing a game. Just, just read the facts. Okay. Because we're gonna finish up here and be done. How long is the lifespan of a dog? The average dog lifespan is not only determined by the breed, but also several other factors can contribute to your dog's life expectancy. Twelve point eight years is the average, which I'm not sure how long that is. 12.8 years? No. Well, it's between 12 and 13 years. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. Wow, this is the biggest answer. Which dog breeds are the largest or the tallest in the world? Oh, which ones? Well, in world record, the English Mastiff weighed at 156 kilograms, which is 343 pounds. Wow. And measured almost 2.4 meters, which is 8 feet long from nose to tail. 343 pounds, is that what you said? Yep. 343 pound dog, y'all. Eight feet long from head to tail. That's no, no crazy. Nose to tail, actually. That's crazy. Which is the largest dog breed. However, if you ask for the tallest breed, then deserve the different answer. Wait, can you articulate better if you what, huh? If you... If you asked for the tallest breed, okay. then deserve different answer. Okay. Harlequin Great Dane is the tallest. If it measured 1.07 meters, 42.2 inches tall, and almost 2.1 meters, 7 feet tall, when he stands up. Okay, so Great Danes are the tallest, but what was the breed of the English Mastiff? Yeah. Was the largest? Yes. Okay. Eight feet long from the tail and 343 pounds. That's crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine that. I can't, if Jamali was that, I would freak out. That'd be odd and weird. <laughs> I'd be like, what? All right. Who is this dog? What else you got? Um... Can dogs see colors? Yeah. Yes! Dogs can see colors. But they most likely see colors similar to a colorblind human does. They can see better when the light is low. They can see better in low light? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So if we turned all these lights off and it was nighttime, Jamali could see pretty well. I did not know that, that dogs could see better in low light. I mean, maybe not dark, but like low dark. But... Like if you had the chandelier, the chandelier here, just on dim, and and it was nighttime and everything else was off, and you had this on dim, you would probably see the best then. Uh huh. What else you got? Which dog breed is the smallest <gasps> in the world? Chihuahua. <laughs> on average, the Chihuahua is the smallest breed of dog, but some individual dogs may be exceptionally small. The smallest dog ever recorded was a Yorkshire Terrier called Big Boss. It was approximately only 7.6 centimeters, three inches long, and three centimeters, one to one and a half inches tall at the shoulder. Wow. So this Yorkshire Terrier named like, Big Boss. Like this big, like this big Yorkie. Yorkie, Yorkie. Yorkshire, Yorkshire Terrier, but they call them Yorkies for short. It's <laughs> funny. Wow, look at that. Mommy, yes. you did that. You did that. Oh. You know, I'm trying to make sure it's all snapped together. All right. Any more facts before we finish up? Yep. What do you got? Some people said dogs have no sweat gland in its body. That's why dogs need to open its mouth to cool down the body temperature. Is that correct or not? What correct. What do you think? That is just half correct. Oh. Actually, dogs have sweat glands in between their paws, yes. However, that is not enough to cool down the whole body during running or in hot days. The dog's tongue plays an important part in the body temperature regulation. Yep. Can a newborn puppy survive, survive by its own? Can a newborn puppy survive on its own? Mm -hmm. Can it? Yes. No, what does it say? Sure not. <laughs> a puppy is born blind, deaf, and toothless. It must, it must need good care, otherwise cannot survive. Right. Has to nurse off of mama for a while and get its eyes open and its ears working and get walking. Can I feed dogs what we eat? Excuse me? Did you hear me talking? Yes. Why did you start talking? I'm sorry. That wasn't nice. 
I was trying to tell you about puppies. Hmm. I, I had puppies when I was little. Well, I do know about them. You do? You've seen puppies? Baby puppies just born? I saw baby puppies being born. They're well, cute. I haven't seen them being born, but I have seen them just born. Like just after they're born. Mm -hmm. Did you know that they couldn't see and couldn't hear? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know they were toothless. Yeah. That's very odd. Well, you were toothless when you were born, too. Did yes. you know that? Not really. <laughs> well, now you do. <laughs> so, can I see that one? Because I think that has some... Did you read all the facts? I did. Okay. Well, we're going to say goodbye to everybody because so, we've been on for a while. So, can I tell you what Jamali looks like of all these dog breeds? No, because that's just the color. That's not accurate. I know, but I'm just... just what does it say? Can I see? Sporting Dogs Retriever. Can I see? Yeah. So, Jamali is in the shape... Like with the tail and body and floofiness, uh -huh. she looks like a flat-coated retriever. She does. A lot of people mistake Jamelli for a flat-coated retriever. Also, yes, she is a Labrador and Golden Retriever, but those can both be yellow, which sometimes is very interesting. That if there's a Golden Lab baby, mm -hmm. there's a Labrador. Labrador Retriever and a Golden Retriever, mm -hmm. both yet like goldenish and yellow. Yes. It can make a black dog. It can. But Jamelli's mom is black, and she yeah. is like 73% Golden Retriever, and then the rest of the percentage is all lab. So, all right, it's time to say goodbye to everyone. Jamelli, where are you? Do you want to come say goodbye? Okay. Jamelli, let's go. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoyed the dog model. It was fun to put together and pretty easy compared to some of the other ones we've done, actually. Jamelli, let's so go. So we'll add this to our collection over in the He's school coming. space. Let's go. Jamelli, come here. Let's come go. here. Come Jamelli. here. Jamelli, come here. Let's over go. here. Let's go. Jamelle, over here. Over here. Paws up. Paws up. Come on. Paws up. Pause up. Say hi. All right, guys. Hi, We're going to go. Yeah. We will see you guys later. You. Jamelli, look at our dog. That's we you. built a dog. Get your puppy. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye.